D&D in a castle is simply the most amazing experience you can have in the role-playing world if you are a fan of Dungeons and Dragons. The world's top influencers and the game designers get together with you to play through a three-day mini-campaign inside a 600-year-old castle. It's intense. It's grueling. It's amazing. Now, I'm fully booked for my first session in November this year, but at the time of this video, I've still got a spot or two at my second session in November. If you want to join in the chaos, the crazy, the awesome, head on over to the website and book now. Details are down below. D&D in a castle, you will never experience it like this ever again. So you want to make awesome battle maps for your games. What software do you use? Which one do you go with? There's so many out there. I am looking at two of them, which I think arguably are the best currently available on the market. This is as impartial a review as I am possibly capable of doing. Join me to find out which one will work best for you. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of How To Be A Great GM, which is you. How to be you, but better. No, actually, just how to be you, because you're a great GM. I'm pretty confident of that, because you watch this channel. So, Incarnate versus Dungeon Fog. I've worked with both of them. Both of them have been sponsors on this channel. I am the ambassador for Dungeon Fog. That much is true. So that's my caveat. Now, I am also very good friends with the owner of Dungeon Fog, who said to me, Guy, please, will you make sure that you are doing a completely impartial review of the two different types of software? Do not be biased in any shape or form or way by the fact that I give you money on a regular basis, I know where you live, and we have written a book together. That is not what Till sounds like at all, but pretty much he said, go for it. Let's see which of the two is tops. And so I've got a whole bunch of categories. I'm going to work through those. This is a long video, folks. So there's going to be parts where I'm drawing maps using both types of software and a third type. That is my good old fashioned left hand. I will draw a map to begin with. I will see how long that takes me. I will look at the quality of that map and then I will do a map in Incarnate and I will do a map in Dungeon Fog and see which of those comes out tops whilst also looking at a whole bunch of statistical information. When we look at the category of styles, now this is something that is very important because there are lots and lots of dungeon maker uh, software out there, battle map maker pieces of software out there. Style is a matter of choice. I can't tell you this style is better than that style. I can tell you, however, that my own personal style of badly drawn, shaky, rickety, I don't even know what that is, I don't like that style. That style is not for me. I like my maps to be beautiful. I like my players to sit there and go, oh my goodness, this is just spectacular. I do like that. So when we look at the styles, paper style, well, that's as good an artist as you are. So I can't judge it on that. Incarnate has got uh, their Incarnate style A and then Incarnate style watercolor which is very nice to have the two different options to choose from. And then they have a limited black and white option, which they've just added fairly recently. And then you can upload your own assets. Dungeon Fog has their Dungeon Fog resident artist who has done almost all of the props that they have. So that is a uniformity, which is quite nice. They have a wide range of black and white, which they also added fairly recently, but kind of dove into because, well, they just like the style. And then you can upload your own assets, of course. On the scale of whose styles are better, well, it's a personal choice. Genre. Now, many people will only ever be playing in one genre. Fantasy. Fantasy is, by most polls, which I've personally conducted and which I have seen other people conducting, 60% of the role-playing community will be doing fantasy almost exclusively. That might be you, or you might be in the other 40% who are going, well, yeah, I do some fantasy, but I like to do some sci-fi. I like to do modern horror. I like to do Victorian horror. 
So genre can be quite important. And when we are thinking about buying software that we are going to spend money on, we need to make sure that that software is going to allow us to have that flexibility if we need it. So paper, obviously you can draw whatever you are capable of drawing. If you can do modern and you can do fantasy and you can do sci-fi, well, good for you. I would be interested to see hand-drawn sci-fi maps versus hand-drawn uh, fantasy maps to see if there is actually that much of a difference because when I draw them they all look pretty much the same. Okay, so I have finished drawing my map by hand, and there it is. Um, make of it as you will. I could use it. It took me 12 minutes to draw this. I didn't really have a plan in mind. I kind of wanted a sort of a temple thing with a bit of an arena. Uh, one of the big problems, of course, using pen is I made some mistakes, like the cliff came down too far, so I had to sort of round that up so it doesn't look so nice and stuff. But there you go. 12 minutes cost me nothing. Incarnate has fantasy, lots of fantasy assets, 31,000 fantasy assets, as a matter of fact. And then they've just introduced sci-fi, where they have a very limited pool of sci-fi, but it will expand over time. Dungeon Fog, this is where Dungeon Fog really shines. They've got fantasy, they've got sci-fi, they've got steampunk, they've got modern, they've got classical era, and they have organic, as well as having over 40,000 assets, which is a lot of assets. From a genre perspective, Dungeon Fog has you covered, whereas Incarnate has a very specific focus. Pricing, uh, show me the money. Financial security before role playing. You can role play with theater of the mind.
Okay, so money. How much does drawing on a piece of paper cost you? Zip, zero, zilch, nada. Oh, but apart from 10 or 15 years worth of practice. So that's how many thousands? Anyway. So drawing on a piece of paper costs you nothing except for the price of those, you know, marker pens or whatever it is that you're going to be using. And they run out irritatingly whenever you need them, but you never use them. So I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> Incarnate is $25, 25 US dollars every year. That's it. It's a flat rate. 25 bucks gets you Incarnate. Dungeon Fog has a whole bunch of options for you. You can go monthly or it's 50 US dollars yearly. So Incarnate wins out literally twice as much as Dungeon Fog does. Okay, so your yearly subscription pays for what exactly? Or your monthly subscription, depending on which model you go with. Yearly subscription. What does that pay for? Well, your paper has no subscription. It has no cost whatsoever. So you are responsible for storing it, for saving it, for putting it in a file, for remembering where the hell it is. When I was the young lad of 12 or 13, I used to hand draw maps. I had a whole file full of maps, beautiful maps. They weren't beautiful, they were horrid. But they were referential maps which I could use in my games. I can't remember what happened to them now. They got lost in a move somewhere. But I had a lot of maps which I used to keep in a big lever arch file and I could never find the ones that I liked. And because I was quite lazy, I didn't draw new maps very frequently until eventually my players were like, oh, you're using map number 12. Okay, we know the door to the left leads into a trap. And I'm like, no, it doesn't. I haven't changed it. Well, bugger it. Anyway, so your subscription. What does your subscription get you? For Incarnate, your subscription uh, gets you some updates throughout the year. It gets you storage of your maps. And of course, it allows you to go back and edit your previous maps, which is really useful. It's really, really, really helpful. Dungeon Fog has monthly updates. They add new assets every month. It's a pledge that they've kind of made. And they bring out 30 or 40 new assets on a new genre or a new theme as it goes along, which you get to vote for. You also get to store your maps and you get to edit your maps and you get to upload a certain number of assets, like 10,000 assets, which is an insane number of assets until you remember that Incarnate has 31,000 and something and Dungeon Fog has 40 something thousand. So assets build up quite quickly, apparently. So that's what your subscriptions get for you. Both services, Incarnate and Dungeon Fog, will not delete your maps if you stop paying your subscription, but you won't be able to then go in and edit them with all of those wonderful proprietary props that you have paid for. How's that for some alliteration? That you will have to then renew your subscription for. So on the whole, who gets you more? Dungeon Fog gets you more stuff on a regular basis.
Okay, so you have created your beautiful map and you are a genius who is incomparable to Michelangelo or Leonardo da Vinci. With your paper map, what can you do with your paper map? You can take a photograph of it and then you can upload it onto a VTT if you use a VTT. Or you can take your paper map and you can draw it onto a bigger map for your players around a table. What can you do with Incarnate's maps? Well, you can generate 4 or 8K. That's a huge resolution map which you can then take as a JPEG and you can upload that onto a VTT, or you could print it out and sort of, you know, try and blow it up for your players, however you want to use it. What does Dungeon Fog do? Dungeon Fog does the whole idea of printing at a really high resolution, 300 DPI, if you really want to. They also have an inbuilt universal VTT exporter which sits with a lot of the different VTTs out there, and that allows you to export a universal VTT file, which you can then import into most of the uh, VTTs out there, and that will load up the file, and it will bring in the lights and the walls and all that kind of stuff. There may be some variation, but that's what they're trying to do, is integrate a lot closer with VTTs. And of course, they also do PDFs, which is interesting. You can export as a PDF. So those are your export options on what to do with your map once you are finished creating it. Nice little features that these different things have. So paper, what's a nice feature? A paper, uh, well, it, it, it basically, it auto saves as you draw it. But there is also very little way of going back, unless you're drawing in pencil, to erase and change things. So I don't really like the paper. It's once you're done, it's done. Pen to paper and you're committed. But you can't lose it unless the paper gets wet and soggy because your dog ate it or something along those lines. Anyway, so paper is pretty permanent, which is pretty cool. Incarnate has a save reminder, which says, hey, you've done a thousand different things and you haven't saved recently. You should probably save. That is a really handy function to remind you to save on a regular basis. Dungeon Fog takes it one step further and says, hey, we're just gonna auto save for you because if you're like me and you've been working on a project for four hours, you can sometimes forget exactly what it is that you were doing and you forget to save and uh, it gets complicated. All in all, this is my take on which of these pieces of software I like. To be perfectly honest with you, I think this is more of a financial question and more of a utility question than an actual which product is better question. If you have smaller budget, $25 a year is gonna get you incarnate, which hopefully you've seen the maps that I have made in both of them, is a beautiful looking map. It's stunning. It's going to work wherever you need it to work. You can print it, you can use it, you can do whatever you like with it. It is going to look perfectly wonderful. And there's a learning curve to both of them, Incarnate and Dungeon Fog. They both got learning curves. Dungeon Fog, of course, is more expensive, but Dungeon Fog gives you more genres. So if you are more of a GM who does one shots or who does short turn type of things, Dungeon Fog is the way to go. I know that may not be as satisfactory as you might like. You might go, no, no, I want 9.5 for Incarnate and 9.5 for Dungeon Fog. I want, I need something. Tell me which one is better. There just isn't the right answer for that. They are both remarkable pieces of software. Incarnate has one major step up from Dungeon Fog, which I have not mentioned because it wasn't the purview of this review, but I feel it's important at this time to mention it. Incarnate allows you to make beautiful world maps and region maps as well. That's part of their offering is you can go world, region, and then battle map and city maps too. They allow you to make city maps. It is a process, but it looks beautiful. And they do that across the board. Dungeon Fog is just battle maps. There is other software and development, which I know about, but that's not under review today. So think about what it is that you're looking at. Think about how often do you need new assets? Do you need 50 different types of barrels or will one type of barrel work for you? Those are the considerations that I think best demonstrate which piece of software you should go with. Now, why did I not look at a whole bunch of other pieces of software? Well, if you really want me to, leave it in the comments down below. Honestly, that's the best way to do these things. A massive thank you to Incarnate, who provided me with a month's free use of their software, and to Dungeon Fog, of course, who provided me with their software so that I could do these reviews. I hope this has been helpful. I hope this has given you some kind of inkling as to the difference between the two. And until next time, a huge thank you 
to all of my wonderful patrons who keep this channel going, and to each and every single one of you for watching all the way through until the end. Until next time, happy map making!